Uh, next up, we're going to invite Mark Zastro. Mark is a recovering astronomer and a freelance science journalist based in Seoul. His story is entitled, My Birth Mother's Choice. Please welcome Mark. When I was a kid, as far back as I can remember, I knew I was lucky to be adopted. Lucky to be an American. My Korean birth mother was a hero to me because she made the choice, the sacrifice, to give me up so that I could have a better life in America and so that an infertile couple in northern Wisconsin could have a child. I knew it was a hard choice for her. I was born on March 11th, 1987 and whisked away and placed in a cradle in a row of many in the basement of a social agency. But it was a choice that she made willingly because she was... It was a choice that she made willingly because she felt unable to raise a child as a single mother in South Korea. And it's not like she had a lot of help either because my birth father didn't have a job and apparently he uh, failed in business. That's what my adoption file said. But I found out that wasn't the whole story. When I was 15, my adoptive parents brought me and my younger brother, also from Korea, back to our country of birth. And I found both of my birth parents. My birth, my birth father, it turned out, had never been in business. He was a writer. And uh, they were actually married for a while. And so while my mother was pregnant, my father was working on his first collection of poetry. And contrary to what I had thought, my mother was under a lot of pressure from her father to leave him and give me up. I eventually met most of my extended birth family, some welcoming, some distant, living all over the world, um, each of them carrying a piece of my history. But at 15 years old, I was a little emotionally overwhelmed. I didn't know how to piece together these fragments, and I didn't do a very good job of, a very good job of staying in touch, to be honest. I really shut my birth family out. But I guess some things rub off because, like my father, probably because of him, I too became a writer. And four years ago, I moved to Seoul to freelance as a science journalist. And this time I met my half-sister, Lisa, my birth father's daughter. And although I had fallen away from most of my birth family, I still stayed close to her. So one night, last December, she called me and she said, come quick, Mark. It's our grandmother. She just died this evening. And I said, oh my God, I'm, I'm so sorry. And she said, why are you sorry? He's, she's your grandmother too. And I said, oh yeah, you're, yeah, you're right. I, what, what should I do? What, what, how, how can I help? What, what can I do? And she said, well, come quick, her funeral's starting now. And I said, it's 11 p.m., for really, right now? She said, yes, come quick. So I ran home, I threw on a suit, uh, I grabbed a cab, uh, took the cab out to the suburbs, to the funeral home. When I got there, it was midnight. I figured I'd missed everything. But uh, what I found out when I got there was that Korean funerals last three days. So <laughs> what I also found out when I got there is that I was reporting for my filial duty because well my, my father is his mother's oldest son and i'm my father's oldest son which made me they told me the mourner in chief the sangju the chief mourner of the funeral so i had to represent the family i had to lead the funeral procession and greet all the mourners who were coming to pay their respects and I was absolutely terrified. 
I stood there and felt this sense of inescapable dread as all these well-wishers, these family, friends, and acquaintances came forward because I didn't know a single one of them. I don't speak Korean well. And I'd only met my grandmother once, nine years earlier. It was probably awkward for them as well, though, because they had no idea I existed. They thought I was my father's other son. So they would walk up to me and say, ah, I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, you must be EJ. And I'd say, mm, not quite. And my, my, my uncle would swoop in and say, well, actually, this is Mak. It's, it's, it's his, Mar his American son. Oh. He had an American son? <laughs> but he looks Korean. <laughs> so eventually, my father just stopped saying my name. And I felt relieved. On the third day, when the mourners cleared out, and it was just us, the image that's burned in my memory is my father staring at his mother's body with tears falling from his face, leaning over, clutching her lifeless shoulders. I remember the weight of her coffin as together we lifted it and placed it in her burial drawer. And after her cremation, I remember how cold the dry winter dirt was in our hands as we dropped it over her urn. But what haunts me is the fact that the only thing my family would tell me about my grandmother, the one thing that they felt I needed to know was that she had suffered terrible abuse and violence at the hands of our grandfather. And I realized that they weren't just mourning her death. They were mourning the life that she never had, the choices that had been taken from her. A few weeks later, my sister actually found a copy of our grandmother's memoirs, her published memoirs, on our father's bookshelf, which detailed all of this in, in, great, uh, in great detail. And it got her thinking, where did I fit into the family history? Why was I put up for adoption? And why did our father divorce my mother? My father said they wanted to stay together, but her father wouldn't allow it. So he went to him and made a deal. He said, I'll leave your daughter, but please don't abort our child. And he agreed. But what he didn't tell my father was that he wouldn't let her keep the child. My father didn't know I'd been sent to America until I contacted him 15 years later. And that's when I realized my birth mother never had a choice. The whole time, it was two men bargaining over the fate of her child behind her back. When I was born and whisked away two days later to that cradle in the basement of the social agency, everything was prearranged. She didn't even know which agency I'd been sent to. So I have long lost all comfort in the narratives of adoption that I grew up on. It's a truism that every adoption begins with loss. And the deeper I search for my origins, the more loss and pain to my birth family I find it caused. My birth mother, by the way, she went to graduate school for graphic design. She studied abroad at the Pratt Institute. She went on to a successful freelance career. She became a university professor and she learned English so that when I met her, she could tell me all this herself. I'm so lucky in so many ways, not the least of which is in having found my first family. And my birth mother is still a hero to me. I just wish she had the choice. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Mark. Next, we have Grace Lee. Grace Lee, a reporter and producer at Reuters. Let's just stick with this. Next, we have Grace Lee, a reporter uh, at Reuters Digital, reporter and producer. Her story is entitled, My Voice. 